Hi, my name is Archon. Now that we've gone over the jewel, moving motors, and Buphoria, we're going to put all the code together to make this 85 point autonomous. Keep in mind that you will need to change most of the positions and values because our robot is hopefully different from yours. So we're first going to make a copy of the program we made for the jewel, because this has the most functions, and we'll rename it to auto red full. We have to again switch to autonomous, because when you open an op mode, it defaults to Kellyock. One of the cool things we can do in block is clean up the interface. We're going to right click and select clean up blocks. We're going to go back to the blocks menu and make copies of the other two programs, as we will be changing them. We're going to go into the motors op mode and copy all of these initialization blocks, which change the run modes into a new function called init2. We're going to add this back to our auto red full, but because we're now combining the whole autonomous, we have to add our glyph lift, which is the mechanism that intakes and deposits the glyph. Our mechanism requires that we raise and lower it. We're going to add this function to our run op mode block after the first initialization function. Now go into the Vuforia code and copy all the blocks before the wait for start into another function called init Vuforia. Making functions allows multiple blocks to be copied between programs. We'll paste this function into our auto red full and add this to the main op mode again. We also have to activate Vuforia. From the Vuforia op mode, we'll copy call Vuforia.activate and add that directly after the wait for start. If you recall, the knock jewel function we created in the second video ends with a servo movement. To make sure that the arm is in the right place before doing more stuff, we're going to add a sleep for one second. The next thing we have to do after knocking off the jewel is get the Vu mark. We're going to go back into the Vuforia program and take everything out of the while loop and add these to a function called get Vu mark. At the end of the get vumark function, we have to append the deactivation of Vuforia. Add this function into the auto red full after the sleep function. Now we have to intake the glyph. We're going to make another function and add a power input to it so we can outtake with the same function. We'll add this to our op mode with a power of 1. Now, as I mentioned, we have to raise the glyph lift. We'll set the target position to 400 and the power to 1. We'll wait for a second as the servo's intake and the lift raises to make sure that both of these actions have completed. We're going to go back to the motors program. We'll make two functions to set the target positions of the four drive motors and to set the same power to all of the drive motors to minimize the number of blocks we have to drag. This also makes it easier to stop all the motors. We'll add these to our full autonomous. As Jotsna mentioned in the third video, the distance we move depends on the VUMARK reading. We're going to do an if do, else if do, else block from the logic menu. If the VUMARK indicates the right column of the crypto box, we're going to set the target position to 1270 for all the motors. If the VUMARK indicates the left column, the target position will be 1950. 
If we are unsure of what the reading is, we will always go to the center column. We'll set the target position to 1530. Outside of the if statement, we'll set the power to all motors to 0.25 and then wait for 3 seconds to make sure that we've arrived at the correct column of the crypto box. After this, we will reset all the motor encoder positions by running the init2 function again. The next thing we have to do is deposit the glyph, and the first step to do this is to turn. To turn, you set the encoder position negative for the right motors and positive for the left motors. Because the same power is being applied for the motors, the drivetrain will turn right. We'll set the target positions to negative 900 for the right motors and positive 900 for the left motors. We set the power to 0.5 and wait 2 seconds to make sure we've turned. Now we stop old motors by setting the power to zero and we reset the encoder positions again. After this, we'll go to forward 250 encoder counts to go into the crypto box as we simultaneously lower the glyph lift. You'll see the target position for the glyph lift is negative 300. We're using a negative encoder count instead of 100 because when we reset the encoder positions, the motor's zero position is actually 400. The power is going to be 1, and we'll wait 1 second as we lower the lift and move into the crypto box. We're setting the intake servos function to negative 1 so that we can outtake the glyph into the correct column. We'll set the target position to 100 so that we back up. Again, this value is different because after the init 2, the zero position of the drivetrain motors is far back from the crypto box. So that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching and we hope this helped. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you want more videos like this. Happy programming!